Ingemar Johansson returned to the ring for the first time since the Floyd Patterson trilogy in a rematch against Joe Bygraves. The two first fought back in 1956 where Ingo won on points. This time around, Ingo TKO'd his man in seven rounds behind a second round knockdown. If Ingo could win back the European title, it was expected that he would gun for Sonny Liston. The road back to the title was off to a solid start for the former undisputed champion. For his first fight of the new year, 20-year-old Cassius Clay faced Sonny Banks. Banks would surprise everyone by becoming the first man to drop Clay. Cassius rebounded and returned the favor by dropping Banks en route to overwhelming him and scoring the fourth round TKO. Good telling comeback win for young Clay. Interesting that he was dropped by someone by the name Sonny. Why do you ask? You'll see why in 1964. Cassius Clay clashed with Billy Daniels and stopped him on cuts in the seventh round. Clay's fifth round prediction fell through, but a win is a win, I suppose. Clay's cocky character and winning streak was beginning to earn him recognition as the Louisville Lip. Ingo is back in the theorized European title fight. His opponent, Dick Richardson, was handled by the former heavyweight champion in eight rounds. In said eighth, Johansson dropped Richardson who rose uneasy and was promptly knocked out cold by the famed Ingo right hand. He'd done it. Surely, the road to Sonny Liston should have a little light along the way now. Right? Sonny Liston had knocked out eight of the top ten en route to this long overdue affair. The only two he didn't knock out simply refused to fight him in the first place. Those two men were Sir Henry Cooper and former champion Ingemar Johansson. Custy Amato protected his champion Floyd Patterson for as long as he could but it was time for the gentlemen of boxing to face the dynamite. To clarify, Lloyd himself wanted to fight Liston and overruled evading him any further. They officially signed on March 16th to fight later on September 25th. The contract detailed a significant rematch clause that we'll address after covering the fight. Speaking of which, Sonny Liston absolutely dominated and destroyed the champion in the opening round, becoming the first heavyweight to win the title by first round knockout. Floyd couldn't hope to harm a hair on Sonny's head. It was one-sided, point blank. But you've got to admire Floyd trying his best to beat the count. Some of the nastiest blows you'll see. Two minutes and six seconds of Charles Sonny Liston enforcing his will and exercising his frustration. He'd been ducked for so long, only to capture the crown so expediently. Maybe the eight to five odds in Sonny's favor were too generous toward Floyd. Cuss knew it. The boxing world knew it. Sonny definitely knew it. And maybe Floyd did too. Liston was destined to be heavyweight champion. The fear set in for the boxing world as Liston's ties to the mob left a heavyweight crown in the suspended unknown. By that I mean the mob now had an obvious control over the title. Er, er, allegedly. Gotta be careful here. Let's talk about that contract from earlier. Patterson was guaranteed a rematch within a year and retained the rights 
to dictate the terms. Liston had to agree to these terms as it was the only way to secure the title bout. The WBA would take note. A cross-era battle between the Louisville Lip and the old mongoose, Archie Moore. Cassius Clay made easy work of Moore, stopping him in four rounds as predicted. The era difference can be summarized with this fact. Moore turned pro seven years before Clay was even born. It had to be bittersweet for Clay because he'd gotten Moore back for his time under him at his training camp, but Moore was an old man anyway, so how much credit could he expect? Not much, apparently, as Clay acknowledged the win didn't mean too much. Four months before this, Doug Jones once again tried his hand against a heavyweight contender. He went to war with Zora Foley, who edged out a close decision to remain a notable heavyweight. And Doug Jones now once again had another tick to add to his growth as a fighter. Jones had also fallen short in his shot at the light heavyweight title three months earlier. If he's for real, this may mold him into a solid fighter who will in fact become a champion. Well, he was set to rematch Foley two months after in October, but Zora had to pull out. Jones went about his business and TKO'd substitute Bob Foster in eight rounds. Here we are with the rematch between Jones and Foley, another two months after Foster. This time around, Jones climbed off the canvas to score a seventh round knockout. The upset cost Zora a chance at champion Sonny Liston and established Jones favorably in the boxing world. Zora Foley just can't catch a break. Since the Labarante loss, He'd put together nine wins, only to be derailed by a youngster he'd beaten already at the tail end of the year. Is he ever getting that title shot? What a turnaround, all in the span of one year for young Doug Jones. His manager announced that from here on, he would only be fighting at heavyweight, as he'd proved himself. His next opponent had better watch out, because it's surely won't be a walk in the park. Nineteen sixty two is in the books. Here are the ring's top ten heavyweights of the year. Unbelievable! The heavyweight title is finally out of the vice. Sonny Liston, in historic fashion, has become the new heavyweight champion. Crazy thing is, he already cleaned out the division on his way to the top. So what more can we expect from the new champion? Boxing PDS upset of the year goes to the Foley Jones rematch. Doug Jones turned his career around in quick fashion, culminating in finishing the year with this. The opening round of Patterson Liston is our round of the year. It was no contest and completely one-sided. Once again, the heavyweights didn't receive the fight of the year honor. My choice has to be the demolition job that was Sonny Liston's destruction of Floyd Patterson. It was historic, brutal, and everyone saw it coming truthfully. The heavyweights didn't produce the fighter of the year. Boxingpedia selects Sonny Liston as the standard bearer for the division. Cassius Clay was close, but Sonny Liston's lone affair of the year was the evisceration of Floyd Patterson for the title. He ended an era with that one, and it's more impressive than Clay's exploits. On January 26th, Leotis Martin made his professional debut in a split decision win. He won all four of his fights on the year. On August 23rd, the National Boxing Association, or NBA, changed its name to the World Boxing Association as a means of recognizing the growing influence and popularity of boxing around the world. The WBA had originally come about 
to counterbalance the influence of the New York State Athletic Commission, or NISAC. Ironic how much this would go on to detriment the sport. On October 19th, the Silver Age's real deal was born. Ernie Terrell, outside of a loss to Cleveland Williams, won all of his fights on the year. We'll touch more on the Cleveland Williams affair in the new year. Thad Spencer had a flawless year, going 5-0 and continuing his rise. 1962 may have been untelevised for the big cat Cleveland Williams, but trust and believe he won three of his four fights. The other was a draw against Eddie Machen. One of those wins was against previously mentioned Ernie Terrell, who was young and on the rise. Again, we'll detail it next year. Speaking of Eddie Machen, he had a flawless 1962 outside of the draw to Cleveland Williams. I hear you met Don Juan today. How was he? He wasn't too friendly. What do you have to say? He didn't even shake my hand. What are you going to do about that? Now you must fall. <laughs> I just annihilated George Logan in four rounds. I'm gunning for Floyd Patterson and Sonny Lister. And if they get in my way, I will annihilate them also. And most people think because uh, I can predict a fight like this and make it come true, they think that I am becoming overconfident. You see, I have earned the reputation as the Louisville Lip. Cassius Clay won all six of his fights and moved closer toward the title picture. 1963 will show if his boast to be world champion before turning 21 has any meaning. The division looks to be wide open. Sonny Liston fears no man. Floyd Patterson is guaranteed a rematch in the coming 1963. The contenders in line should see some movement soon. It's an exciting time for the heavyweight division outside of the fact that the new champion has mob ties. Oh, and how about that Olympian Cassius Clay? He's looking good, even in the face of some adversity. Like I said, exciting times to be a fan. Off to 1963 we go. It should be a good one.